It's like, I'm broken, I'm shattered, my life is over, my wife has left me and I'm brokenhearted or my child has you know, passed away or something. It's like, there are moments where you have these overwhelming, like unconceitable, you can't overcome this situation or your life is at stake, for example, or whatever. And that's the moment where you're open enough to say, I, I, there, I, there's got to be someone else out. Please, something exists. It's like there's a part of you that's almost primally will, will cry out to a non-existent God in hopes that he does exist. And a lot of times that's when um, you were ready for that to, to come to that realization. Right. But the most important thing about your moment when it comes to discovering God is what that moment meant to you and where you exactly. are and how long it will stay with you and carry with you especially in days like this where you can't go to church and get a reaffirmation. You can't go to church and feel that same God that you felt on your deathbed, for example. Yeah. Because it, he's not there. It doesn't exist. So we're very alone in this way. And sometimes, look, will God let you go through pain? Yes, he will. It reminded me of two situations, and it took me years and years to get over this. Now, I was very young. Like, I was late teenager, maybe 20. I was in a completely secular situation, okay? We were looking for a house to rent, something like that. Anyway, I was very shy. Now, I didn't speak, you know, and especially about things like this. So I'm in this house and this guy is talking and God kept telling me, like, look, tell him about salvation. Tell him, tell him, tell him. And I'm like, I don't even know this guy. I froze inside and i never said anything to him about god or are you saved or anything like that but i ignored that voice of the holy spirit three weeks later that guy was out in those same woods cutting a tree the tree fell wrong fell on him and he was killed instantly okay i had a lot of guilt and i was just hoping somebody else got to him fast forward about three years or so I'm in a restaurant, okay? It was a brand new opening restaurant and the friend that took me knew the owner. The owner comes over to the table and God starts with me again. Now, I'm just wanting to eat my chips and salsa and I hear this voice again, tell him, tell him about Jesus. Tell him. And I, look, for the second time in my stupidity, I did not. I'm like, I can't do this. Like all these people and all these, and like, this is going to embarrass him. This is not something you bring up at a restaurant opening. Three weeks later, that guy went out and hung himself from a tree in his backyard. The amount of guilt that I felt for so many years, I cannot even ex express to you how sad and how devastated I was. And it, and embarrassed that it took me a second time. But you know what did happen out of that? Now, am I responsible for what happened to them? No. And do I have to answer to God for this? Yes, I do. But what, what changed in that tragedy for me is that I hear God say, tell somebody something. I don't care how stupid it is. I don't care where we're at. I don't, I have no cares to give. I will say whatever I need to say whenever I need to say it because I had to learn through much pain and devastation that you do what God says or, or you have to live with your yourself, which was almost unbearable for me. That is heavy. I, I, I talk about a lot. Like I'm not, you know, I'm typically emotionally affected by things, but just the thought of that unfolding, that's, that's a lot to to bear the weight of and um that definitely does that breaks something in you where you're like yeah it who, broke who, my pride who yeah exactly right like who am i to be embarrassed about this so like this may be this person's life at stake it may not be but it might be i don't know what's going on all i know is what i feel like i'm supposed to do right now I don't want to be like in my case, I, I don't want to be cringe. I don't want to talk about God. Everyone hates Christianity. I don't want mm -hmm. to bring it up out of nowhere. This is silly. I'm, I'm smarter than that. I want to, you yeah. know, all this stuff. But at, at that point, I mean, you go, you're just like, just screw that. That is, that is just not, I don't care anymore. This is more important. It has to be, you know, it's like, there's a, there's a, there's a level there's it. You, you, 
and I guess that's the thing is that if you take that concept, there, there are levels to us where we kind of have to be broken repeatedly until we're able to see things clearly. I know that I have for sure had to go through a lot of different things because it's only in moments of in, intense pain and things like this that I actually will change. I guess just like the whole mindset, like anti-God thing is like, you shouldn't have to experience pain if God is good. You, why does God allow, you know, children to, to perish or, 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 to, or to be, you know, uh, robbed of their innocence and things like this. And it's partly because, you know, God isn't in control of the earth. Humans are, that's the, what free will does. That's what it's about. Um, but that's the other thing is that like, I think that God knew in the beginning that free will, the whole concept of it, he knew that if you have free will, the only way to actually develop and grow is to go through times of like, this sucks. This is the worst feeling. To like to be injured in a way emotionally that you have to change because the person that you were before is currently dead. I think he was aware of that. And so, yeah, you can look at it on a debate scale and say that God is evil. But the concept of what he does with it afterwards is what is always neglected. What happens next when evil happens, when it persists, when it continues? What does God then do with that? And no one looks at that very often. They just see the fact that thing bad, God bad, but it's like there are stages. You can't make a turkey sandwich without killing a turkey. You know what I mean? Again, if there were no bad things, then what is good? Good is neutrality if there isn't bad. It is, again, what does God do with the evils that happen? It's what happens after that. And then think about how much evil you see compared to good. It is harder to create good than it is to create evil inherently. I, I, I believe that pretty firmly. So there's two things I really want to address that God is, is faithful to show us why. Also, Moonlight, how about if you were unwillingly made to participate in a sa in satanic ritual? I was about to ask you if you wanted to address that. Uh, been there, done that. I, I will say this. It has been a lifelong journey to get over that. But in the end, I mean, and Moonlight, there were times that even as a Christian person, loving God with all my heart, I was still angry at him. And I, I mean, look, y'all, God wants you to be real. That's the thing you need to know. God wants you to be real with him. And it doesn't matter if you're mad. Do you know how many times I have screamed at God? I mean, I don't recommend, I'm not saying go do this, but in the passion and the anger and the confusion of where I was in a certain moment for different reasons, I have yelled and railed at him. Why did you let this happen? In that moment of going back to that part of my life when I was extremely young, I, at one point, I mean, I was yelling and railing at God. Where were you? When this happened, when this specific thing happened, that was the worst possible thing that you can imagine ever happening to another human. Where were you, God, then? Where were you when I was dying inside? Where were you? And I want to tell you something. It took a while for me to hear his voice. But he showed me so clearly. He was right there. He said, I was... I was right there and I went back to that spot where I could see that ritual being performed. But instead of just the ritual, what I saw is I saw him standing there weeping and still holding on to me. It's like I was there. I was there for every second that you went through that. I never left. I wasn't checked out. I was there. You just couldn't see me. But I experienced every bit of that pain with you. I didn't want to cut you off so sharply. I just wanted to point out that, again, you hear atrocities and things like this. And we say, how could, you know, how could a bad thing like this happen and God still be involved without him being evil, without him being heartless and cruel? How could a bad thing like this happen? How could that be allowed? And you can very audibly hear and see the, the pain in, in your voice and, and in your story. And we see this and we say, God must be evil. This is not, how could God willingly let this happen? How could you say he said that he was there watching this as it unfolded? But then you said that you, but you saw that he also in a way took the weight, the pain. He went through that emotionally with you as well. And it's not a matter of 
there being evil, but what happens, what he does mm-hmm. afterwards, what he does next. It's taken me a lot of years to reconcile this, but I would not change a thing, okay? Mm-hmm. Because what it did, what the the enemy meant to destroy me, the plan was to destroy me and remake me into something I was horrible, that I was never meant to be. But instead, God in his grace and mercy redeemed me and turned all of these experiences, all of that connection with that kind of world and that spirituality that is so very wicked. He flipped it around and gave me gifts in the spirit realm that are so amazing. Like I couldn't have this connection with God in a flesh bag suit that I'm in in this world if I didn't know him from that time, okay? If I didn't know him from that ritualistic period, because I feel like God knew and created me in such a way that he knew eventually, once I worked through the pain, that I could flip it around and say, you know what? What you tried to destroy me with, devil, now I'm coming for your kingdom. I'm coming for you because You can't stop me because I know who you are, but more than that, I know who he is.